Now it's fair to say when I think about ping irons my first thought is they're sort of king if you like of game improvement irons. Nobody does it better than providing average golfers with forgiving irons. Do I think of them in terms of a player's iron? Not quite the same so it'll be interesting to see what I've got in my bag which is definitely aimed at that player's market. It's almost blade like in its looks. It's the new i59 how playable is it? How forgiving is it? And will it work for this average golfer? So what have Ping got right now in their repertoire in terms of the players category? Well, they've got the i500s possibly sit in there. The iBlade would sit in there. They've definitely got the Blueprint Iron, which is one of the thinnest uh, profiles I've seen on the market. Definitely a player's iron. What else we've got? I210s possibly sit somewhere in the middle. So they always cover every spectrum in terms of the irons that they provide ping, but this model I59, it's a forged body, stainless steel face. We've got some new stuff going on the inside of this, supposedly to enhance forgiveness, very much similar to what's provided in the I210. So that'll be really interesting to find out. They've possibly put together a real interesting iron and a real interesting package that could appeal to a broad spectrum of players even though they themselves are suggesting it's aimed at that player's market. Now dry ball dates is a wonderful thing and uh, where would we be without it and don't worry I will collect it but you know what it's a really sunny day we've got a par three course at the back here at four golf so what I'm going to do first of all I take the nine iron out on the par three course and just do a little few tests in terms of feel and control flight in the ball them kind of things out there on the par three and then I'll see you back in here in a minute or two. Right, so just to mention lofts and uh, one thing that Ping do extremely well is they keep everybody happy in terms of what they're looking for from lofts. So whether it be traditional and uh, or almost retro is what they call it. You can have a seven iron using that as the barometer uh, with a loft of 36 degrees. The standard product is lofted at 33 degrees seven iron and there's a power spec as well. So whatever you're looking for, if you're very much down the traditional route, then you can go as weak as 36 degrees in your seven iron then Ping are prepared to do that for you. I suppose that really sits in that player's category. So next shot is uh, just 95 yards with a nine iron. Uh, we're gonna try again, if this is gonna fit into the category of a player's type iron, they're gonna wanna flight the ball out a little bit differently. Can we just uh, flight this one down a little bit? 95 yards with nine iron sits really nice at address. Well, that could go in the hole, sit. Well, it's a little bit long and kick through the back there. But the thing that these do, I'm not, to be honest with you, this idea that you can only shape a shot with a player's eye, and I, again, think that's pretty much a load of nonsense nowadays. I think you can fly a ball with pretty much, or shape a ball with pretty much uh, any iron in hand. In fact, I mean, the argument is, seems ridiculous on the, on the base of the, all we try and stop doing is shaping the ball we're hooking the ball we're fading the ball and we're talking about a player's iron is designed to shape the ball we can do it with any club in hand but what i will say is that uh, the big deal about these is just how they sit as a dress that no offset whatsoever just allows you to do whatever you want in terms of manipulating that club face and it feels very very comfortable when sat behind the ball they look superb um they really do it's hard to be critical let's see if we can take a little bit off this one I don't think we took enough off it. Kick in. Ah, oh, yeah. That one's pin eye. great deal of effort's gone into these in terms of the aesthetics i really like what they've done and uh, you can see obviously uh, resemblances of the kind of uh, the i500 the i blade 
and also that blueprint iron. It's that satin hydropearl finish which is supposedly uh, performed exceptionally well in wet conditions but it's very much a streamlined body, very minimal markings and it's very much the modern day iron. It looks superb. At a dress again it's that thin top line that comes into force and it's whether or not you as a no matter if you fall into the category of a sort of uh, what you consider looking out for game improvement irons then you look down on that top line you just think straight away these aren't for me what i like to find out is whether or not it's we're too soon to dismiss these irons based on the category that often the brand puts them into they do sit uh, fairly minimal offset at address thin top line everything you'd expect from a player's iron and that bottom line again as you can see very narrow sort of sole width but for me sit really nice on the eye now the finish on these clubs matches incredibly well with the new ping glide wedges which you'll uh, probably see or hopefully you'll see my review in the next 24 hours of them and you'll see me play from this exact same position and um, i've got nine iron in hand just to see if we can sort of hit a few chip and runs and get an idea again for the feel because this is where i think you really start to uh, find out if this forged body but stainless steel face does give you some responsiveness back into the hand so we'll hit a few of them but as i say i'd get to nine iron and once i got down to pitching wedge and uh, i'd be looking at putting those pin glide wedges in the bag which is like i said they sit seamlessly in terms of how they look it's not a bad little clip to start the day but i want to see sort of how the sort of next one how you know how you kind of learn from that bit off the bottom grooves and uh it's a much cleaner strike got there a bit closer as well and be happy with those two any day to be honest with you and again you've already heard me say in the range itself they provide a strange feeling in terms of sound i would say it's kind of it's not pure forge definitely that um i don't know whether that's what they're trying to achieve but in terms of that ultimate softness no it doesn't do that but it is a very sort of responsive sound into the hands it's one it's soft it's not loud and again it really does sit that kind of uh, well what I prefer to hear anyway at least when I'm playing my iron shots when I'm getting them out the middle that is okay so at this point i want to hear from you because what interests me about this iron is sort of i keep saying about the market it sits into and like i said yes it is the player's iron but how many of you will be putting this on your uh, to try list what does it sort of it's almost unique in what it competes against i think it's um i don't know it's it's a real tough iron to categorize uh, am i the only one confused by this or are you feeling the same so like i said from a a popularity perspective please comment down below how many people are actually going to try this iron and it fits into your kind of um what you're looking for or is it really aimed at a very small market well it's okay now this is very much a last minute addition to the video that i actually filmed last week in terms of the testing but yesterday what came to light was a real interesting thing for me i thought i'd relay that information back and that is the price of these irons ping have got these at a recommended retail price that's not necessarily what they'll sell in the shops at but their rrp is 239 british pounds per club that's a massive that was a bit of a shock i'll be honest with you and that's not because ping's argument will be the sort of components the technology everything that's gone into this is producing what i think is probably their most expensive iron that they've ever put to market and for me ping have always been aimed at the mass market and their pricing structure has always been aimed at the mass market and that came as a bit of a surprise 
So whilst I'll never get involved in how you decide to spend your money and whether or not you think these are worth it or not, I thought it was certainly, it was, it was an eye opener in terms of it coming from Ping and it was something that I would relay to you and let you make your own judgments. I've also been informed that they'll be available for fitting pretty much immediately but won't be available for delivery until late September. Right, back to the rest of the video. Well, it's fair to say I was pretty impressed with what uh, we achieved out there and uh, already ticking lots of boxes, but the last uh, iron that you see me hit before you went outside was a nine iron. And I've got to say, the first thing I'll report back, if you like, is the ball fight's fantastic. The feel is really good when you're hitting a sort of full shot, which you didn't quite perhaps experience when we were out there on the course. But like I said, sit really nice at address ball flight is uh, i've got nine iron in hand it's again more in line with my pitching wedge my own irons are slightly stronger lofted than this but again really really impressed with what we've done with that but then it's down the bag and i'm going to go from i'm going to skip the seven iron the seven iron is kind of like that's the one that we always test with where all the dry ball data comes from but for me in these type of irons i've always been a player that i think from my ability i'm comfortable with wedge through to seven iron with a player's type iron. It's not an issue for me, but it's when I get to sort of six, five, four iron, that's when I start to worry. And when you look at this at address now, it's a different animal altogether. It's that offset bit becomes, well, looks zero and the face looks small. And it's a thing where it's more about a confidence thing. It's not whether or not, can I hit this blade iron, if you like. It's whether or not my head tells me can I hit this blade iron? And it's all about the aesthetics. And I think that's the biggest deal about where these irons are categorized. I've got a funny feeling I'll be able to hit this thing, not a problem. But like I said, it's that battle between your mind, what the manufacturers are telling, or, or who the manufacturers are telling us these irons are aimed at. And uh, sort of getting it right in your own mind. Anyway, let's try one. Do you know what? That's gone perfectly fine, bullet straight. And I don't know whether you picked up on the noise, it was off the bottom grooves. And I always say the best way to test a golf club, in my opinion, is not when you're in it from the middle, but when you do exactly what I did there, which was get it out the bottom and it's still gone out there, which we always have a difficulty in measuring forgiveness. That's the big claim by manufacturers, isn't it? They're more forgiving. Well, measuring that. As a, as a YouTuber is a difficult process, as a golfer is a difficult process. But all I can say, bottom grooves went extremely well. And I suppose it's just looking at a number of shots over a period of time um, to see how it's performing as an average across that club face. That was a better ball, better sound coming from it. You can see it's gone that little bit further, but ball flight remained the same off the bottom groove that it did, which was far more out the middle there. So again, two five irons straight from switching from nine into five, which is what you do effectively out there on the golf course. No issues whatsoever. So much so I'm enjoying these, I'll let a third. Don't be greedy and, oh, that's the best one. That's the best one to finish. I'm liking them, you know. I'm saying I'm liking them, I know, because like I said, the battle for me is where they sit. And I'm thinking, do I want to play these irons? Is this one for me? It's a player's iron, it's forged. It looks really nice. But I'm thinking, why am I changing to it? What would it sway me from that I am not already getting from my current irons or other irons that I've tried? And I suppose that's always the battle a manufacturer is facing is how they persuade you to swap from your existing irons into a new one. But in terms of ticking boxes, what's the negative about them? Right, it's time for a summary and uh, we've done everything we can in terms of the testing. We've got dry ball data, which I'll go through at the end. We've tried uh, nine iron, we've tried seven iron, we've tried five iron, been out on the course in terms of some short stuff. So we've put it through its paces. I'll go through the dry ball data as a summary, but I'll throw every sheet up for you at the end for those of you who like to analyze that data. Very, very briefly, we've seen exactly what you'd expect from these. Let's take the seven iron as being that more traditional loft, let's say 33 degrees. It spun a bit higher, it launched a bit higher, but in terms of distance, it went a bit shorter than what the bulk of seven irons that we see right now, which are around 30 degrees. But it did it nine iron, seven iron and five iron, it did it consistently well. And the performance was exceptional off each. The, the consistency of performance was exceptional off each of the irons. 
The thing is at the moment, the thing that's getting a little bit boring about reviews is there's a huge amount of positivity around that it's hard to pick fault with any product. But when I review something, I look at it from the perception of the individual that's likely to buy them. So if you're what consider a low handicap golfer who likes a player's profile, then surely these are on the list. They tick every box, they look good, they feel good, the profile is right. But the one big thing that will sway you more than anything, I think, in this particular iron is the word forgiveness, which we don't normally see and, and look at with players' irons. And Ping themselves say that these irons have got I-210 forgiveness. And I think if you go back to the first shot that I hit in the driving range, which was a five iron off the bottom grooves, if I'd have hit that with, let's take it to extremes, if we'd, if we'd took that back 20 years with a blade of old, I hit that off the bottom grooves, it's ricochets up the forearm, forearm and it's going nowhere. And it performed incredibly well. And I think that's where Ping have done really well. They've produced a player's type profile. What's happening with technology is the package is becoming smaller in terms of irons, but the forgiveness is still there. And that's a great, that's something that for me on a personal level means that I can play the iron that I like on the eye, uh, but maybe wouldn't have been capable of playing in terms of that forgiveness factor, that sweet spot being a bit small in the past, where I can get away with a little bit like that five iron and still be able to play the clubs that I like visually. So as ever with Ping, it's just, you know, I mean, they seem to, whatever they do, the genre, the category, that the player that they're aiming at, they seem to get it right. And I think the I-59s, like I said, have got to be, if you're looking for that type of iron, uh, don't dismiss them, like I said, if you don't feel as though your handicap suits the profile, I'd still give these a go because I reckon they're plenty playable enough. Right, that's me done. As ever, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one. Comments down below. Uh, like I said earlier on the questions, are these going to be on your wish list? Are you going to be thinking of playing them? And uh, I'll see you all soon, hopefully tomorrow night with the Ping Glide Wedges.